again excited to have you uh let's let's get going all right All right, so here we go. So this is Crypto Red Ron here, and tonight we have Alberto Daniel Hill, and he is uh, the first hacker to be sent to prison in Uruguay. Uh, definitely uh, happy to see you uh, free and out here and able to uh, have this interview with us and, and just to enjoy your, your, your freedom. And again, um, we're... we're uh, happy to uh, have your knowledge and just be able to kind of pick your brain a, a bit here this evening. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great, and thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, you never realize the importance of freedom until you lose it, and losing my freedom was probably the thing that uh, was the worst um, that the worst thing that ever happened in my life, and recovering it was like something priceless that uh made me really understand the the value of it so i am very happy that i am here and talking to you and uh, well uh, we i can share part of my story my learnings and well uh, talk to you about whatever you want uh, regarding my case or cryptocurrencies or my country legislation computer crimes anything all right perfect thank you thank you and uh all right, so we'll just uh, we'll, we'll get started. I do have some questions for you, and thank you for being um, open and willing to, to answer those. Um, so first, uh, what is it that initially got you interested uh, in computers and in networks and networking in general? Well, I was uh, a child. I was like, I think, six years old, and I visited the, the apartment of uh, some relatives and they had an Atari uh, 2016. And wow, when I play with that device, I felt in love with it. And well, uh, after that, uh, a few years after that, I got a computer that was uh, lent to me by a neighbor. It was a computer that had only one kilobyte of RAM. Imagine that, one kilobyte of RAM. And wow. well, after a year, I had to give that back. I, I was almost crying, and my my father made made a, a good a great effort, and he bought me a, a, a new computer. Uh, but that time I was probably nine eight, nine or ten, sorry. And well, I started learning while while other children were playing soccer on the streets. I was actually modifying computer games in assembler. And that was the first time I hacked a program was a computer game when I was 10 years old. And ever since then, I've been in this field and it's part of my life. I mean, it's nothing, it's not something I can um, make a difference between my, my profession and my life. It's all the, all the same thing. I mean, being in cybersecurity or hacking for me, it's everything. That's, and, and, and just to clarify, how, how old are you now? Well, right now I am 46 years old. So okay. imagine I've been, I've been in this for 40 years. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen, uh, you've seen a lot. That's for sure. Um, yes, I, so, live a lot. I live a lot. I've seen a lot. Uh, some of the things I I will have to carry with me till the day I die. Some I will sh I have shared with the world. But in this uh, field, you really see things that are incredible. Uh, it's like it's like watching a fiction movie, but uh, it's it's actually reality. You don't. People that are outside this world don't really have no clue of what this world is about and what's really going on, and it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, behind the scenes, uh, definitely. Um, and I, 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 I can relate to you um, as far as getting that computer kind of gifted to you and... Um, you know, starting off there, I, I had a similar situation. You know, I had a, a uncle 
he um thankfully he he gave me some hardware and i was able to uh, maximize uh my use out of that as well so i i definitely know where you're coming from and again um that, that's that's you know always always cool to hear um uh, all right so I mean, you kind of already answered this. I was going to ask you, how long have you been involved in computer networking and security and just hacking in general? So uh, I guess I'll kind of go a little further into detail on that one. So um, you told us kind of a, a, a time frame when you were, you know, um, editing games and doing things of that nature, playing with code, um, which is is the beginning of, of, you know, hacking and coding. So what what when would you say that you really kind of stepped it up, um, you know, and, and really kind of took a, a deep dive into, um, you know, uh, just hacking or, or, or anything of that nature? Um, well, actually, uh I have a degree. I am a computer engineer. Uh, I got graduated in 2003. Well, I have to tell you, in university, I learned um, zero, nada, zero, absolutely nothing about uh, security or hacking. I just spent my time in university hacking the networks of the university. So it was a good learning experience. I was just kidding (laughs) for the record disclaimer, or maybe not. I don't know. But, uh, after that, yeah. then if you ask me in particular when when it was that I actually felt I was like sorry, it seemed like you cut out a little bit. You still there? as a hacker and that happened after I was released from prison that wow I didn't know what to expect from society if I was going to be accepted if I was going to be hate if I was to be uh, I don't know uh, questioned but now the love that I received um, the community of hacking and social security was really 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 supporting me in any way uh, so yeah, I think I really become aware of being part of this group, of this city uh, when uh, at that point when I, everybody accepted me and well they I, I just felt naturally that was I was part of, of the, this wonderful world. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's good that it, it, it went that way, you know, that everybody was accepting. Um, it sounds like, you know, there there's there's different types of of hackers as there are different types of uh, people in any uh, field and you know uh, it sounds like as long as your your intentions are are proper you know and you're heading towards security and and just trying to um, be aware of vulnerabilities in in, in different systems you know there's nothing wrong with that Um, so again I'm I'm glad that everybody was um, you know accepting of uh, you know like you said accepting of you um so how how strict would you say the digital internet laws are there in Uruguay, uh, and have any of them changed since the time of your uh, legal incident? That's a very good question. The laws there are no laws about computer related crimes in my country. Uh, when some somebody commits, uh, let's call it a crime that is uh, using um, technical uh, resources. It, it is treated by analogy uh, with traditional crimes. For example, uh, um, a crime of ransomware is treated as a traditional case of extortion, but there are no, abs- there are no crimes related to computer technology. The only thing that might be considered uh, as something like that are, com- are crimes related to um, the production and the distribution of child pornography. That is the only law that basically might be might consider um, electronic media as a way of uh, committing the crime. Uh, but it all, but it's not only the scope of that. I mean, it also applies to uh, child pornography in other mediums such as printed papers or, or anything. Okay. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Sorry, and when, when, no, when it comes to the changes after my arrest, well, in, I, I can tell you that I've been working four years hard exposing my government, exposing the law enforcement, exposing those who were behind my case. And there was some, there were some little tiny changes because they could feel the pressure. They could not, uh, they could not answer or deny anything. I have been posting uh, for years on Twitter because I've been posting evidence that cannot be denied, uh, pages of the file of my case, things that are what? ridiculous that they cannot say that that is incorrect because it's part of the file. And right yeah. now, I think they are just being much more careful and try to be a little bit more professional when it comes to this kind of uh, this kind of uh, crimes. And well, I think that they will never forget my name, as I will never forget their, their name. <laughs> Whenever they come to, uh, to any computer crimes, they will think before or acting. Who is who is the person who is on the other side uh, before trying to be disrespectful, arrogant, uh, and completely uh, abusing of uh, of their power to to get whatever they want? Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, it was an eye opener for everybody. Um, so, if you could give uh, any new hackers or programmers uh, advice, uh, what would it be? Unfortunately, uh, my advice uh, is something that is not not. It's a little bit sad, but I would say that when it comes to if you find a vulnerability in any system and you're trying to help to solve it and report it, uh, think carefully. Think carefully because actually doing that might eventually cost you some trouble, that trouble might be huge that will happen with me. So be careful, know the laws that applies to what you're doing in your country and be aware that anything you do actually might have consequences that are completely inimaginable for you. So hearing my story might open your mind, your brain, and might let you understand that your actions can actually cause a lot, a lot, a, a change in your life that is far beyond your understanding. Wow! Yeah, that that's that's great advice. Definitely. Um, yeah, you think you, you know that you're doing something um, that that should be deemed as uh, harmless or just uh, uh, no big deal, and and it might actually be perceived uh, otherwise by um, certain individuals. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Um, so how, how involved are you in cryptocurrency and what, uh, got you first interested in it? Uh, well, I was very, very involved prior my arrest in cryptocurrencies. I was full time working with blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies. I was part of the team, uh, that was creating three ICOs, uh, the white paper for, th for three ICOs. Um, I was representing the Let's Share Wallets uh, devices uh, here in my country, in Uruguay. I was also working with a company based in the United Kingdom that was um, was issuing a Visa debit card that you could charge with any kind of cryptocurrencies, and you can use you could use it you could use them as a traditional debit card anywhere in the world. So I was, I was also giving a lot of talks about security and blockchain security and cryptocurrencies in my country. So I was really involved in that uh, prior to my arrest. Nice. Yeah. And um, I, I, I know that that added level of convenience is definitely going to uh, help uh, crypto be adopted, you know, as far as the mainstream. So it's definitely good, you know. The the more convenient, the better um, for your for your average uh, everyday uh, consumer. All right, and um, let's see. So, what major changes have you seen in networking and security since you were arrested? Well, I have seen that uh, the cybercrime uh, and any kind of uh, crimes related 
to technology have increased in a in a potential way. I mean, uh, the the amount of cyber attacks, or cyber crimes we are having right now is amazingly high. It's increasing day by day. We are completely think. I think we are completely losing the battle against the bad guys. Uh, companies cannot cope with all the attacks they they have to to face on a daily basis. Uh, ransomware uh, attacks um, are were something that are, are completely out of control. Um, organizations such, such as hospitals have been a huge target for them, and the losses uh, that uh, those kind of crimes have uh, commit have been uh, produced are billions of dollars and i don't see a change in that i think that that will keep increasing cyber crime will keep increasing we will see m m much more much more crimes every day m much more sophisticated crimes and i don't see that enforcement is able to 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 keep up with uh, this kind of uh, crimes unfortunately i think things are getting worse and worse and I don't see a change in a, in, a, in a short term. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, definitely, it seems like if anything is increasing uh, rapidly and, and not decreasing at all. Um, so uh, do you feel like Uruguay is, is accepting of crypto? Oh, well, um, I think, I mean, here it's not illegal to have cryptos. There are no laws regarding uh, the regulation of it. Uh, the government has put on the table uh, the topic, but nothing has been done. And I think that it's a matter of time before some kind of um, message from the government will be sent regarding the acceptance of that as part of the reality so i think we will see that uh, bitcoins and cryptocurrencies in in general will be accepted as part of this of the ecosystem of the financial ecosystem of the country i think it's something natural they cannot stop it so i think we will see both our, our traditional financial system along with the cryptocurrencies uh, living together in this country and in all the region Definitely. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, it's it, it's heading in a direction to where, you know, it's, it's not going to be uh, really stoppable. And so um, I, this next question, I, I, I feel like you, you know, with your background that you um, are, are a very good person to ask this to. Um, do you believe that the blockchain is secure? Um, well, um, when it comes to saying that something is secure or not, uh, I will always say that nothing is secure, but uh, the, the design of the blockchain uh, is uh, is extremely robust. I mean, it was really designed with security by uh, before anything, and the way it works has been it has been proven for okay how much, how long since 2008 till now like 13 years that uh, yeah it's very 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 robust and the kind of uh, security issues we have experienced have always been related not to the blockchain uh, network but to to the users at the end i mean exchanges uh, and gods for example uh, phishing attacks stealing money from the uh, wallets from the people people forgetting about the the the, the private keys of the wallets uh, and attacks to to exchanges scams uh, ponzi ponzi scams uh, people putting money on projects that were uh, not uh, real uh, all the all the issues we have seen well uh, have been related not to the blockchain but to humans 
to exchanges, basically, and to programs. Uh, we have seen issues to related to smart contracts that affect uh, certain cryptocurrencies just because the smart contracts had backdoors or had issues when uh, they were designed or programmed. But that's all about the human factor committing mistakes, either intentionally or by accident. So I would say that I really believe the blockchain is uh, a very robust uh, it has a very robust architecture and I, I trust in the security of, of blockchain. Awesome. I, uh, I, I totally agree with you for one. And I, um, I, I like the first thing that you said, nothing when it comes to networking, especially nothing is secure. Um, again, you couldn't be more accurate and, and you hit the rest of it right on the head. Um, either things are unintentional on the user's end and we make mistakes or there might be malicious attacks on that other end that we're uh, not aware of. Uh, so there's a lot to be um, cautious of and, 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 you know, again, aware of. So um, I, I love that answer. Um, so what are your thoughts on incorporating artificial intelligence into the blockchain? Wow, never, nobody ever asked me that question. And artificial intelligence in the blockchain, well, that's something very interesting. Yesterday, I was in a space where somebody uh, apparently generated uh, an AI uh, solution or service to create certain uh, amount of images um, based on uh, some keywords, the images were uh, unique and he was going to, to mine them, to, to, to sell them on, on, as, as NFTs. Um, the possibilities are, uh, are endless, but sometimes it's scary at the same time. Um, I, right now, honestly, I, I cannot imagine of any uh, actual success case of AI and blockchain. Uh, is there anything you know about it? That Because honestly, I am not aware of any kind of implementation of both things. I, I currently am not aware of any either. Um, I, I, that's why, again, that was a good question just on both ends. Um, I, I do know that um there there's certain utility projects and utility uh tokens that it seems like they're heading in that direction and I, I i i wish i could think of them right now i know i've seen a couple but off the top of my head no but i know that they're they will definitely you know be be totally integrated uh with each other um i i just i i think that it's going to be um you know, a whole new um, just adventure for, for us. And it'll be kind of cool to see uh, uh, what they come up with. But again, yeah. yeah, I haven't seen many examples. Yeah, for me, uh, when it comes to AI, the, the challenge, because AI can be used as a tool to help cybersecurity, and it's also a challenge for cybersecurity, um, mainly in terms of ethics and the information that AI can uh, produce, analyze, uh, generate the decisions because uh, if you are using AI to process, for, for example, information about people, behaviors, uh, any kind of data related to uh, human beings, uh, then the output can be questioned in terms of how ethical it is to generate that uh, from the information they gather from a human being. So ethics for me is um, an issue, not a minor issue to do, to consider when it comes to AI in general, not only in blockchain-based solutions. Yeah, definitely. So th that'll be a uh, one for us to keep our, our uh, eyes on in, in, in 2022. Uh, I'm sure we'll see some... Uh, advancements and revelations as far as that goes so again um we'll we'll continue to, to keep an eye on that and see see where we end up um have you heard of web three and if so what are your thoughts on, on that well web three for me is like um 
a point where uh, the people are mm, getting mm, dis not disconnected but get, getting freedom from the standard uh, internet that we have been used to for since it, it began uh, people are gaining the power and creating uh, any kind of things they can imagine without having to uh, be linked to any kind of third uh, party service uh, the centralized solutions are are the key to uh, giving freedom to people to create whatever they want uh, it's something that is happening there are a lot of projects very exciting and it's something that it it just uh, well, cannot be stopped at this point. I think we will start seeing a lot of new projects related to Web 3.0 in the next uh, months, and I'm very excited to 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 know them. And I think many of them will really be uh, dis disruptive in everything we we are we have thought about in the past. They are going to change many things. Uh, in, in the rules of the game and I'm very excited about that uh, it's here to stay and it's going to change actually the whole internet for from my point of view I agree with you and uh, I, I'm excited with a few things that we've talked about tonight uh, including the AI incorporated into blockchain and web 3 a few other things I mean these are cutting edge and, and really in their infancy so it's exciting to see um, things this early on and um, you know we literally have no idea you know what to expect moving forward but but it'll be fun to, to watch it unfold right before our eyes um so i do have one final question for you i, I uh, i'll let you uh get back to you know doing what you do but i want to ask you what crypto token will make you financially free again everybody this is not financial advice we're not financial advisors we're just on here giving you guys uh, some general information but again, if if there were a, a crypto token to make you financially free, what would that one be? Well, if you told me, Alberto, you have to put uh, all your bets on one uh, coin, uh, choose only one, uh, and what would it be? I, Alberto would uh, go for Bitcoin. Uh, would, I would Bitcoin. go for Bitcoin. Yep. Nice. I... I, I can't say I disagree with you. Uh, the of price range course. per. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Of no, of course you can disagree with me. Uh, you are right. I mean, I'm not the owner of the truth. I might be completely wrong, so I'm willing to to learn and uh, listen to your point of view. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I said I can't disagree. I I I do dis I do agree with you. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, there's a lot of... I don't like that. I want people to disagree with me. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, in that case, Safe Moon. Safe Moon, I feel like, is going to give me my financial freedom. Um, that's my top contender. Um, but Bitcoin, is, you know, it's undeniable. And even with its uh, high price, no matter what, you know, there's potential uh, for growth with Bitcoin uh, exponentially. So, again, anybody that backs Bitcoin, it's the top dog and it kind of got us all where we are uh, in this crypto world. So I never bash it. But at the end of the day, on an easier uh, entry point and entry level, I would say these days, um, you know, Safe Moon is kind of where I, where I, where I, how I would answer that. But all right, um, thank you again for your time tonight. Um, I won't hold you up. Uh, it's been been awesome, and um, maybe uh, down the line, you know, as some things progress, uh, maybe we could do this again uh, and take it from there. Yeah, thank you for for the questions. Thank you for having me here, and of course, anytime you would like to talk about uh, other topics, feel free to contact me. I would love to. All right, will do. Uh, thank you again. Tonight, guys, we have Alberto Daniel Hill, the first person to be imprisoned in Uruguay for hacking. Again, um, we're happy to have him out here and free and on our side. And, um, you know, just keep it up and uh, just... Um, Again, this crypto uh, is, is 
is a new new world for all of us and i hope that we all prevail thank you again thank you bye bye mm -hmm.